This is a special report from ABC News Digital. I'm Dan Kleffler in New York with this ABC News Digital special report. Two days after his son died in a fiery car crash, actor Paul Walker's father is speaking now, telling the world about his son's big heart. I knew he loved me. And it went both ways. And I always told him it. And I always gave him a kiss. And I... I knew that eventually he might come to realize what a good person he was. Two days in the shock, still very much in line with the family's reaction. More on the Walker family in just a moment, but first, the latest on the investigation with ABC's Brandy Hitt in Los Angeles. And Brandy, what do we know? What are police saying? What are we hearing about the suspicion that Walker and his friend, the car's driver, were taking part in some kind of a race? Yeah, that's all speculation right now, Dan. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department does say that speed definitely was a factor in this crash. They just don't know how fast the Porsche Carrera GT was going at the time or what caused it yet to spin out of control. Paul Walker, as many know, was a passenger in that car Saturday afternoon. His friend, pro racer Roger Rodas, was the driver, and both were trapped. They could not escape the mangled vehicle after it hit a tree and a pole. Now, detectives are looking into every possible cause right now. They did receive one phone call from a person suggesting another car may have been at the scene, but they can't track the caller down right now, so they don't know if street racing was in fact involved. This street is an industrial complex in Santa Clarita, and it's known for fast drivers who can also perform donuts in the area, so they aren't really assuming right now that all the tire marks on the street belong to the Porsche either. It's going to take a lot of time to get to the bottom of this investigation, but both men were there to attend a charity event in Santa Clarita on Saturday when they took this high-end speedster for a spin. And the memorial continues to grow at the crash site where fans continue to gather as well, Dan. The morning is just growing as those hours are counting on from that accident. But as far as the investigation goes, have, have experts said exactly what specifically they're looking for? I know you had mentioned the fact that, that there has been times before that people have used this particular area for drag racing, for street racing. But at the same time, I have investigators say, are they looking for tire marks? Are they looking for any yeah. kind of other strikes on other trees or any other kind of damage? Oh, definitely. They have forensic teams that come out and specifically know how to look at tire markings and what they can try to tell from those tire markings from where the car ended up to possibly the track or the, the angle and the actual uh, position of the vehicle on the street. Uh, the detectives are looking at all of that information right now. Of course, they're going to try to look at the vehicle itself. It's kind of hard just to determine if there were a lot of mechanical problems with this vehicle because when you look at the pictures, you can just see how much of a mangled mess it is. And of course, there was an explosion, a car caught fire and both men could not get out. Uh, there were reports earlier of possible maybe fluid that may have been left behind on the street. Uh, investigators with the Sheriff's Department will not say if there was any fluid left behind early on to see if something may have been leaking from the vehicle. They're remaining very tight-lipped at this point until their detectives can actually go over the entire scene and figure out exactly what happened here, Dan. You look at the pictures and that car almost looks as if it just disintegrated just simply by the heat of the explosion and the subsequent fire. Have investigators that that is going to be causing any particular problems for them as they're going to try to piece together a potential cause? Oh, no, definitely. When you look at the aftermath of the crash and what's left of that vehicle, that is not going to be the easiest thing for investigators to sift through and try to figure out if there was any sort of foul play maybe involved, if the car had some sort of mechanical error involved. But unfortunately, the other thing with this is, is how quickly and how fast this car could have accelerated in an amount of time. Uh, you know, witnesses there say it was only a few blocks away, maybe 300 feet from the actual charity event itself. And when you look at the area, it's a giant circle uh, for the industrial complex. So they had to be taking off at quite a fast speed uh, when this actually happened and the crash took place. Dan. What, Brandy, what was the charity that he was attending that day? 
Um, it was a charity event for a, a bunch of different things. There was a toy drive. Uh, there was also a kind of a, a fundraising for the Philippines disaster. And for those of us, most of us know Paul Walker as this stunning actor, a very handsome man, part of the whole Fast and Furious franchise. What a lot of people don't know and what they're learning now is that Paul Walker, when you hear his father speak about him, was not the man that you saw in the movies in real life. He, when he wasn't on the big screen, he was more focused on helping others, hanging out with his friends, promoting and, and bragging about what his friends' talents were, and also his charity that he launched a few years ago. It was an international charity where they would go to Haiti and help the victims of that earthquake. He was known as a giver, and that's what his dad described in the, in the interview today. It was just a really emotional part for his father. He was so proud, you could tell, of what he was doing, and, and the Paul Walker at that charity event on Saturday is what a lot of people want the rest of the world to know about. He was a giver, and that's what he wanted to spend his life doing, Dan. It was an image of humbleness and humility that his father has been painting of his son, and I want to play a little bit about some of his thoughts that he shared in those moments after that accident. The last couple of days I've been hearing these wonderful stories about my son. This fella come up to me and said, you got a minute? And I said, sure, I've always got a minute. He says, I was with my family, and Paul was down in the hotel lobby, and I said, I got a 17-year-old daughter who thinks you're just the greatest thing in her. Paul said, let's go meet her. So they went up, father went in, said, hey, get on out here, I want somebody to meet. She said, Dad, I'm taking a shower. This is really important, you're going to really like this. Come out here, I got somebody you want to meet. She came out, she had a towel all wrapped around her, hair was all wrapped in a towel. She come out and she goes, oh no. Paul looked over, took the towel off her head and said, come on, let's get a picture. That was so what he did. That was so what he did. That was so typical of him. You lost a, a spirit. You lost a person that maybe is meant to be this way. I, I was, I'm devastated, and it comes in waves where I just, but he, he had a way about him. I always told somebody, I used to tease him about things, and get on his case, and just, just rag on him. He was used to that tell stories about when he was little, but he always wanted to tell stories about his friends and things that they'd done that were so funny to him. I was really close with my son. I'm glad to say last time I was with him, we, we had a great, great talk about how he wanted to spend more time with his daughter, Meadow, and plans, things he wanted to do, things he was thinking about. And he'd like it when he'd get on a film where there was stuff to do when he wasn't filming. I remember he did one in the Philippines, and he heard the surfing was real good. And they said, oh, no, in your contract, you can't surf. He said, man, if I can't surf, I can't think. I got to be able to go. I want to go away. Yeah. And that's why you never saw him in magazines and doing this stuff and all that stuff. That was not him. You know, he got, you know, he got with his friends, and they took off. They disappeared. And he liked that, you know. It was a very personal reflection from a father clearly in heartbreak and grieving and it's interesting brandy that sometimes in the case of hollywood it is difficult to separate the person from the characters that they play and the roles that they take on but but as we just heard there from his father though he did have a bit of a reputation uh, of a daredevil he did. Paul Walker liked racing. He was involved in racing. In fact, he and his friend Roger Rodas, who was the driver of the vehicle, went to racing events together. And so, you know, while the Fast and Furious movies, of course, are fiction, there was a bit of Paul Walker in that. He liked the speed. And they were taking this car for a test drive. Uh, people that we've spoken to over the last couple of days say this vehicle, this Porsche Cabrera, was it's a very rare car that's actually difficult to handle. But of course, when you hear somebody like Roger Rodas' background as a pro racer, you're thinking, okay, he'd be able to handle it. What went wrong, we just don't know. But obviously, racing and speed was a part of Paul Walker's life. And as you heard his dad talk about there, you know, 
They were very close with their relationship. And this was a man who was not typical Hollywood, even though he had been an actor and had been in Pampers commercials and stuff as a young child. He chose to keep Hollywood out of his personal life, which is just really interesting. You, and you can almost see there from that reflection from his father that he almost takes pride in that, that he was uh, sort of bucked the trend and was outside of that Hollywood lifestyle. And when you see the people who show up that do know him at the memorial site that has just grown to a massive site at the, at the crash scene, you saw Tyrese, uh, his fellow you know, actor and uh, in the Fast and Furious movie show up, just devastated and the tears would not stop flowing. Friends knew him as somebody different than just an actor or just Hollywood or just movies. They knew it seemed like the heart of Paul Walker, the heart that his dad was describing in that interview. A loss, a loss, certainly, indeed. Yeah. ABC's Brandy hit in Los Angeles. Brandy, thank you for that. We do have a complete report right here on ABCnews.com. For now, I'm Dan Kleffler in New York with this ABC News Digital Special Report.